Well, hey, everybody. I'm here with John Johnstone, who's joining us from British Columbia. Uh, John, where are you? Are you in Langley? Is that right? Not Langley, BC. Okay. And is, where are you joining us from? Is this your home or is this work? This is my kitchen. So Amazing. welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for inviting us into your home. Uh, for many of you, John needs uh, no introduction at all. Uh, John's been a massively influential and helpful voice in our church over the last uh, quite a while as we've been seeking to learn and become better relatives with the Indigenous people with whom we share this land called Turtle Island or we settlers call it Canada. And I'm immediately going to correct myself on the use of the word share uh, because that's probably an overly generous word uh, or maybe even just entirely dishonest to describe our relationship with uh, Indigenous people and with this land. Um, John, this Monday of this week, June 21st, is National Indigenous Peoples Day in Canada. And when you and I were talking on the phone last week, I asked you, is this just some day that we white Canadians made up to make ourselves feel like we're actually doing something? Um, or is this actually a meaningful holiday to you and to Indigenous people? And you kind of joked and said, well, it depends where you live. Some people celebrate it, some don't. Um, holiday or no holiday? Can you help us all appreciate why it is so important for us as Jesus people, as, as Christ followers, to invest in healthy and honest and honoring relationships with our Indigenous siblings? Relationship is uh, uh, what God has been sharing with me lately. The Creator has been saying it is so critical and so key. And salvation was birthed through relationship of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That not one of them could accomplish this task by themselves. Each one of them do not have the capability of bringing us salvation all on their own. It takes a relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. But not just relationship, the relationship has to be covered with love. The, the kind of love that uh, says the sacrifice is big enough, the kind of love that uh, raises Jesus up once he is dead. Um, I often joke around and say that cheeseburger love won't get us there. I, I say that because I love a good cheeseburger, but that's not the kind of love that will, will uh, get us to that, this kind of space. But the Bible does say that we are created in God's image. And it doesn't just say that we are created in his image, but it goes a little bit further to say that we are created in his image and his, and I always like to pause and wait for the audience to share. In his likeness, yeah, in his likeness. We are created in his image and his likeness, that we all look like he does. Every tribe, nation, and tongue look like he does. When I hear likeness, to me that means we are to be like him in his likeness. So we should be like him. And he is they, they are them, and they birthed salvation into existence through relationship. So then, to me, that says that we need to be in relationship. When the newcomers come to the land and they push the host people to the side, and they say, I will build my church and there is nothing and no one that can stop me. And they build them. And they're beautiful. And there's lots of them. And then they fill them. And once they're full, they begin to worship. And in that worship, they say things like, oh, Lord, we worship you and you alone because you are worthy to be worshipped. Uh, we ask that you would pour a blessing upon us so that we can be a blessing to those that are around us whilst we stand on the heads of the host people. So when you come to a new land and you push the host people to the side, I am pretty confident that God is up there in heaven with his Philly cream cheese saying that is not the kind of relationship that births salvation into existence. What you're saying, John, reminds me of what the New Testament says, that if we claim to love God, but we don't live in love with our brothers and sisters, we actually are deceiving ourselves, that that's just not even an option. And uh, I just really appreciate that encouragement. John, for those of us who are really early into this journey of learning about uh, what it looks like to be good relatives, um, help us understand uh, what our first steps are. What's our role in this? What can we do? Well, I, I would uh, suggest uh, certainly before any real actions are taken is to 
uh, maybe begin to understand the past. It's kind of an indigenous uh, methods and theology that that we say that uh, uh, it's important to look to the past to understand where you have been. And once you have a good understanding of where you have been, we'll tell you or, or be able to show you where you now are. And knowing where you are now will allow you to take a couple good steps forward. And I would say as a Hanitam, non-Homuk, Homuk is anyone that is from the land here or there from the land, that the uh, the Hunitam are so good at academia. It's just it's their it's part of their gifting, I believe, is to uh, be able to learn and and to have that head knowledge and that understanding and that learning and and so uh, I think you're all all should be good at it. Uh, but the whole deal is is that we can't just keep that head knowledge in our head. Like even our relationship with Jesus, if all we ever do is read the Bible, and that's where it stays then we don't have that relationship. So we need to learn about the past. We need to get educated. We need to to have that education that gets into our, our, our mind, but we can't just leave it there. Somehow, some way, it has to seep down into our heart. And as it's seeping down into our heart, my, my wish, hope, dream, and prayer is that with it also is attached a piece of, of love, the kind of love that raised Jesus from the dead, the kind of love that allowed the sacrifice to be big enough to atone for all our sins. So with that kind of love, as that knowledge seeps down into our hearts, uh, because there's a little bit of a fear that I have, and the fear is, is that the Bible says, if you pray without love in your heart, or if you do good deeds without love in your heart, you're nothing but a clanging gong or a symbol. And my fear is that the church has made a lot of noise for a lot of years but we don't have that fruit on the tree. We don't have that. Have we been praying with love in our heart? So it, it's in, it's so important that we get the education of the past and that it transfers down into our heart and that our heart is allowed to attach some of that love of Jesus to it, not cheeseburger love, but love of Jesus to it. And I'm excited to to journey uh, to journey with Southridge and see this happening uh, in the church and in, in individual people too. For all of us at Southridge, we today are going to make a resource available to you, uh, what we're calling a, a Becoming Good Relatives learning resource. And it's a document filled with links to, uh, to articles and documentaries and uh, videos and books and and podcasts, radio programs you can listen to, all with the intention of us becoming people who are heavily invested in this learning journey. But we don't want that learning, like John said, to just live in our head so that we can become academically smarter. It's all about uh, God leveraging all the things that we can learn to drive us uh, to love and to good relationships. And so here at Southridge, we spend on these Sunday mornings, we spend minutes together doing spiritual practices with the intent of exercising them all week long, every single day. Today, we've spent a little bit of time learning, um, but we want to practice this every single day and invite God to exercise our hearts and our minds to become people who follow in the way of Christ and, and live according to the law of love, as John reminded us. And uh, so when the service ends today, I want to encourage everybody to click on the button to access that Becoming Good Relatives learning resource and make sure that you spend some time with that today, spend some time with that on the 21st as a way of celebrating and honoring National Indigenous Peoples Day here in Canada. Um, but this isn't just a one or two day thing. Let's make this a learning journey that we are, whether we're starting or continuing on, that we follow through on with the help of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, who is the model and the one we are trying to become like in all of this. So thanks so much, John. Would you pray for us as we wrap up? Yeah, Creator, I just, uh, I thank you that that uh, that love is so intense that uh, Jesus was able to be a big enough sacrifice for all of us. Uh, not just those of us that know you now, but those of us that you have written down in your, uh, your book. Uh, I ask that you would also uh, 
help us with that love that we need in our heart that we are able to uh, share with others, that we would uh, be on this journey of understanding and being able to move forward in a good way. Uh, and I thank you for, as I already mentioned, for Southridge that has uh, taken some great steps forward. And um, I ask that you would uh, continue to help them to learn of the past, that there would be many, many, many more good steps forward. And that the love that is growing in their hearts would, uh, would uh, birth prayers uh, spoken into existence that would allow you just to do uh, your great mighty work. Uh, I wouldn't even want to try to guess or explain what it is that you are going to do, for you are the one who has created all things. You are a very competent and loving God. So we just thank you for what is going on and uh, absolutely for what is going to happen. We speak these words into existence in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much for being so generous with your time, John. We appreciate it. Uh -uh. Thank you.